Marabella, Marabella Commercial Finance. I'm here with my friend y Yamar Mir, Yamar Mir with the firm. What what is the name of your firm? Yamar Steiner Mir? and Associates. Steiner and Associates. Uh, Yamar Mir just recently did a class for at ICSC on repositioning of shopping centers. Correct. Yes. So when when would a developer or a, a landlord uh, when would they think about repositioning a center? And Most why? People, yeah, they will do that when the asset is not performing anymore or there is a better, highest and best use that can increase the value of the project beyond what it is now. It's always about uh, value increase and repositioning and uh, the two most typical approaches to um, you know, uh, repositioning uh, is the densification and mixed use. That means that take a shopping center who has seen better days and where demand on the market does not match anymore you know, the, the retailers in the project, okay. take the project and uh, essentially try to go you know, vertical by adding residential offices or other uses on top of the retail and then uh, create some deck parking if you, you know, if you have to do that. And, uh, yeah, Marmir, does that create an added level of complexity with REA, zoning? No, you are uh, absolutely right. It creates the very complex structures, but uh, the, there is no value that you can create in a simple way. You know, and I mean, you feel that's accretive? That's accretive no, to the bottom line to no, go through is. all that added uh, red tape? to do a mixed-use project? I mean, the first thing is, obviously, you have to go to the simple solution first. Okay. If a project can be re-merchandised, with slight building modifications, and reused pure retail, then that's what you do first. But uh, if uh, the project is beyond that, that means that, you know, there is no a simple retail solution anymore, you know, in that location. Okay. Or, you know, the old model had these big boxes who don't want to be where you are anymore. Then you have these big expenses of parking in old buildings that you need maybe to demolish and start thinking in terms of putting maybe some residential on the site and reduce the amount of retail. Then maybe to create a uh, placemaking environment where your retail that you create is around an environment which makes it more attractive. But you are right, these are more complex. But How do uh, most people finance this kind of repositioning? Do they have their no, own the, cash? Are they getting a bridge loan? No, the a banks construction are, loan? The banks are more and more uh, used now to start seeing you know, these uh, complex structures. And uh, if there's one dominant use, then the, the lender of that dominant use will do it. For example, if it is mostly a residential project and there's only a little bit of retail, then typically an apartment uh, lender will look at okay. it as an apartment project. Now, what if happens if you have retail and apartments? You have to find a lender that likes both, right? You can't well, go to a lender that just likes retail or vice versa. Well, we... Uh, I mean, if you have a project which is 50-50, then I think you have to separate your project into two and find okay. them as two separate pieces. But if uh, you know one side is dominant and the other one is not, then you do the dominant you know piece, and then the the minority piece becomes a you know accepted by the major lender. I mean, we recently did three mixed-use buildings okay. uh, with a hotel, with an office, and one with apartments. In the case of the apartments, where, but was, where was that located? In, Can in, you tell in me? Cincinnati, Cincinnati, North Cincinnati, hmm. and then uh, in the case of the apartments, it was an apartment lender who financed the apartments and the retail that was underneath it. In the case of the hotel building, it was the hotel lender who financed it, including the retail underneath. And in the case of the office, it was an office lender. And how do you find your deals? Through agents, uh, just working on your own, no, we, research? We are, we are kind of unique, and not unique, we are different. I mean, we only do large projects. I okay. mean, our projects are two, yeah, three. Yeah, what's, what's your average project? Science. 300 million. 300 million. million. So we don't do small projects. So mixed use components are part of our bigger projects. And that's why when I taught this class, you know, I warned people from the very beginning. I mean, I'm okay. coming from a background of large projects, lots of public private ventures, hmm. mixed use, and everything is not applicable. So I tried to pick, you know, threads of ideas that would work even for a small developer and not think in turn. Oh, let me ask you this, what advice would you give to a developer just doing like, like I'm doing a lot of the Walgreens, CBS, a younger person that's getting involved in development. What's one piece of advice you would give to them that you've learned through your career that you think would help them? I think I would give the same advice that Magic Johnson gave earlier in the bigger <laughs> meeting where he said, you know, okay. you do well what you do and then once what you do well what you do you know then when you are finished with that then move on to something more complex you know don't try to do 23 things at once okay. uh, so if uh, you know your walmart eckert i mean the the traditional cbs business 
is producing work, then keep doing that. Keep There's doing nothing stick wrong. to yeah, something yeah, yeah, that's working. Yeah, yeah, don't it's try working, to yeah. They don't need to complicate fix the wheel right if it's working. Yeah, it's so working. now how can somebody contact you if they had a, 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 a potential development in the 300 million range that well, may the, be a the good simplest, candidate? To yeah, the simplest way is to go to our webpage, uh, okay. which is steiner.com. So it's very simple, steiner, S-T-E-I-N-E-R.com. And on that you have all our addresses, email addresses, the projects we have done. That's the easiest. I mean, obviously people can send me an email address, e email as well, which is ysteiner at steiner.com. But, you know. Thank you so much for this interview. Uh, this is Chris Marabella, Marabella Commercial Finance, signing off from Las Vegas, ICSC uh, 2016. Thank you again.